Good evening and welcome, everybody. Uh, thanks for taking the time out of this unseasonably warm evening uh, to participate in tonight's public hearing. Uh, this is a public hearing for an eagle application received from a Hecate Energy Sunfish Solar II. Uh, the project is in Lee and Clarence Townships in Calhoun County. My name is Ryan Blazik. I'm with Eagles Environmental Support Division. I'm just going to be the moderator for tonight's public hearing. Um, the first thing that we typically do to kick this off is I'll start off with uh, our agenda. This is what it's going to look like tonight. And we're going to start off with our introduction, which we're doing right now. A big thing to keep in mind is tonight's hearing is going to be kind of in two parts. The first part is going to be an informational session. That's where the applicant has an opportunity to present some information on the proposed project, which shouldn't take more than 10 minutes or so. Uh, and then we're going to have a short question and answer session. We'll, you'll have an opportunity to ask a question about this project, and we'll explain how we're going to do that later. Um, and then we're going to go into ways, other ways to submit an official comment before going into the official hearing. And the official hearing part is where you can make a statement for the record um, on this application and project. And then we'll also go through who to contact if you have further questions after tonight's hearing. Uh, a couple of things you should uh, keep in mind uh, for this virtual public hearing. All lines are going to be muted, so you'll be able to hear us, uh, but we won't be able to hear you unless we unmute you, uh, which we can do during the opportune times. If you're asking a question um, during the question and answer portion, we're going to save all the questions for that portion. Um, and then to make your statement, we'll unmute you for that. We'll explain how we're going to do that. However, you can submit your questions at any time using your Q&A box in your Zoom toolbar, so you can just type those in. Um, and then send them to us. And, and again, like I mentioned, we'll answer those during the Q&A part of the session. And then just so you're aware, we are recording this hearing. This hearing will be posted on our YouTube channel in a couple of days, uh, so you'll be able to reference it um, and at that time. All right, so at this time, I'd like to invite our Eagle staff who are on the line to turn their cameras on and introduce themselves. Hi, everybody. I'm Michelle DeLong. I'm the Environmental Quality Analyst for the Water Resource Division of the Department of Environment, Great Lakes and Energy uh, out of the Kalamazoo District Office. I cover Calhoun County and I'm responsible for Lakes and Streams and Wetland Program Administration in the county. Uh, and we're here to take comments on the Sunfish Solar 2 project application. Yeah, uh, good evening. Evening, everyone. I'm Kyle Alexander. I'm the field operations section manager manager for Water Resource Division. Um, normally, uh, the district supervisor for Kalamazoo would sit in on this, but uh, they're out today, so you're stuck with me. Um, but I work closely with Michelle and, and others in the Kalamazoo office. So. Hey, thanks, Kyle and Michelle. All right, we're going to move right into the the public hearing, or not public hearing, pu the public informational session part of this. So this is where the applicant is going to be able to say a few words about the project. Uh, so we're going to unmute Harrison Luna in the audience. Right. All right, Harrison, I think I found you in here. All right. Are you there? Hello. Can I be heard? Yep. Yep. We can hear you, Harrison. I've got your um, your slide here, and I can zoom in too. Um, so feel free to take it away. Keep it to about ten minutes, so we can move on to the Q and A part. It'd be great. Um, and you can go ahead and begin when you're ready. Absolutely. Thanks, Ryan. I will uh, try to be brief here. Um, Hecate Energy Sunfish Solar Two LLC is proposing a solar project located within Calhoun County, Michigan called the Sunfish Solar 2 Project. The Sunfish Solar 2 Project will be comprised of solar arrays, including solar panels and inverters, access drives, transformers, electric power collection cables, and other ancillary features or structures. Uh, this map shows the proposed project solar power facility location. The project will consist of a tracking solar panel system, organized into arrays or areas generating up to 309 megawatts of power. Other facilities needed to support the project include gravel access drives to access each array area and both above ground and below ground electrical cabling to collect and transmit the power to the project substation. 
The substation associated with the project is proposed to be near the intersection of 21 Mile Road and B Drive North in Lee Township. This is the point where power will be delivered to the existing electrical power grid. The project construction will begin in the 2024 construction season with a planned commercial operation date in 2025. The anticipated project life is up to 40 years. After the useful life of the facility, the infrastructure will be decommissioned, removed, and the site restored. The project has been designed to avoid sensitive areas such as wetlands and waterways while locating on available, mostly agricultural uplands on parcels under agreements with landowners to participate in the project. Hecate Energy has applied for a permit from Eagle to authorize temporary and permanent disturbance to wetlands and water bodies to construct the project. These impacts are primarily associated with the installation of the above ground and below ground electrical cable. Uh, that being said, I'd like to open the floor. All right, thank you very much, Harrison. We'll we'll go ahead and kind of move on to the next session. Next section, then um, we will go into the Q and A session. And so uh, I just want to go through real quickly before we do that how we're going to do this. Um, so our Eagle staff will will be on the line, have their cameras and mics on. Um, and Harrison's on the line as well. Um, you can submit your question using the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen. Uh, you can click the hand icon at the bottom of your screen if you're in Zoom. Uh, you just see that, click that. Um, and what we'll do is we'll kind of go back and forth between the Q&A uh, box that we have questions typed in and then the raised hands. And if there's anyone on the phone, which it looks like there is, you can select pound two if you're on the phone and you want to ask a question. Uh, and then what we'll do is we'll unmute you. And what that does is raise your hand and Zoom will unmute you. You'll have a chance to unmute yourself and then you'll be able to ask your question. All right, so with that, yeah, thanks to our panelists for joining us. Um, one question here, there's a few that are in the chat already. Uh, the first one here is, uh, it's kind of long, so I'm gonna paraphrase to a certain extent, feel free to, um, to answer as best you can. How do you propose to proceed when this matter is void ab initio? An affidavit demonstrating fraud was submitted. There's now evidence uh, alleging violations of statute and common law that rise to the level of felony crimes. Um, a hearing done under auspices of Michigan Eagle cannot legitimately meet first presented. So, so it, it sounds like um, maybe talking about what authority and what our permitting processes and I don't know if can you address that Kyle or Michelle? Yeah, I I I guess I would I mean we I think Terry has his hand up if he wants to clarify the question. Um if there's a question pertaining to the statutes that we're reviewing under, which in this case, and Michelle, you're gonna have to correct me if I'm wrong, is both is it 301 and 303, our wetlands statute and inlands, lakes and streams? That's correct. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. If there's a question more specific to that, we'd be happy to to answer. But uh, I'm I'm not sure I understood the question there, Terry. Okay. Thanks, Kyle. Um, next question is. Uh, would you be able to provide current details about the toxicity of the solar panels? Um, the research that this person has been directed to is from 2002. Yeah, if the applicant wants to take a stab at that, that might be a good question for them to address. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to. Um, the solar project is not using panels that are toxic to human health. Um, there are a bevy of studies uh, conducted internationally and nationally um, pointing to the impact to human health from solar panels. What we use is a photovoltaic module, um, which is a relatively new technology. There are multiple technologies, but the type that we use um, does not have any cadmium that leaches out into um, the, the external environment. There have been technologies in the past that have had such a cadmium sort of uh, leaching, but this is not that technology. Right. The common the materials that comprise these panels are common materials, glass, um, metal, 
you know, and silicon, which is similar to glass, silica goes into both glass and the polyvoltaic material. All right, thank you. Um, so next question, what water resources will be required for the facility? And the, the question is uh, volume and frequency. Yeah, they, they may have periodic washing depending on whether rain takes care of that on its own. Um, during operations and maintenance, the protocols for washing will be used. Water doesn't need to come directly from on site. Uh, it can if it's available. However, if not, it can be trucked in. All right, thank you. Um, I'm going to answer one more in the Q&A box, and then it looks like I have a raised hand, so we'll call on that raised hand person. Um, what percent of wetland is impacted by this project? There's a related question that says how much wetland is going to be affected. I don't know. Michelle. Oh, yeah. That, yeah so we've yeah. got two, two questions. How much wetland is going to be affected, and then what percent? Yeah, and the, we will go over those specifics um, when I read the hearing statement. Um, I'll be reading the information verbatim from the public notice, so it includes that um, those specifics there. All right, thank you. Yep. And so our raised hand uh, has the last four digits uh, in their phone number 6265. Um, so we will unmute you. And then feel free to unmute yourself. And it uh, looks like you're live. You can ask your question when you're ready. Okay. They said there was no toxic waste for the humans. Then why are we removing four feet of soil when they decommission it? And I need a clarification better on what wetlands they're talking about. Yeah, thanks for your question. We heard you. Um, anybody answer that uh, in our panel? Which is which... being removed. Yeah, what 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 exactly was being removed? I missed that. Yep, could you repeat um, the call? Four feet of topsoil. When they decommissioned, they have put in their pledge that they're going to remove four feet of topsoil. Oh, I I see. This no, might wait, be a misunderstanding. So when we go to decommission, we're removing facilities down to four feet. So for example, if we have a buried collector line where you have power flowing across it up to the substation then we would go down at least four or at least to four feet to get any cables that are in the ground out of the ground. It, it shouldn't be a huge disturbance to talk to a little session. Nothing. And I think there's a second part of the question then. What, what was your question caller about what, about what location? Yeah, location is asking which wetlands are they talking about? Because on the notice it said section 13 in Lee Township and I live in section 13, but they're talking bee drive and this one. And yeah, and that's where we would have to zoom in on the site plans to identify the exact parcel um, and in I, question I could, and, and, you know, relative to the work that's being proposed. And I can, I can zoom in, but the, per, the person on the line is on the phone. So, um, you know, potential, so you wouldn't be able to see them on the screen, but um, I can provide you with Michelle's contact info later on if you want okay. to follow, follow up with, with yeah, her. Yeah, I'd be, I'd be happy to answer that question um, afterward. Okay, right. thank you. Yep, yep, no problem. All right. Is there, is there anything we want to clarify while I have the screen up here? Or do we want to move on to the next question? Um, if we, on your screen, can you see T drive in 23? Is that anywhere near that? Oops. It's pretty hard to tell. Yeah, it's the, gonna, let, me, I, let me try to magnify yeah. it, but it's going to be hard to. I will say that these maps are provided in the application. And like, like Ryan said, we can provide you with links to where those are are housed online and if you want if you want to take a look at them and then give michelle a call we can probably walk through that with you and, and answer any questions okay. you might have. that's good thank, thank you that's all yep thanks for your question all right and then we have another raised hand 
here, and I forgot to mention this before, but this um, this question and answer session is specifically for questions. If you have something, a statement that you'd like to make about the project, we're going to save that for the hearing part, which we'll, we're going to be doing after this, just an FYI. All right, so Terry W., we are going to unmute you and you can ask your question. Hey there, Terry. Yes, I am. Can you hear me? Yep, yep, we can hear you. Feel free to ask your question. All right. Uh, my concern is over the jurisdiction, not your statutes, because there was a tremendous fraud that was enacted at Lee Township. We hey, Terry, have Terry, submitted... not, to, not, to, not to interrupt you, but do you have a question at the end of this? Because there's should... no question <laughs> this entire proceeding is void because it's pursuant and to fraud. If, the if officials the in Lee Township illegally Terry? acted in personal benefit to Terry, themselves. Terry. Terry, not the that, people of Lee Township. This Terry, is a felony case, crime. And so, Terry, if you're listening, if that's the case, then we're going to do the public hearings part after this. This part is for questions. Yeah, just, I, I would just add, uh, Terry, it looks like you put a number of comments in the chat, and I, I don't see that any of them really pertain to the statutes that Michelle's uh, reviewing this application under. So I... I I, I hear that you have some some significant concerns about the project. It looks like most of those fall outside of our purview. So I would just encourage you to, to follow up with kind of the appropriate entity to get those questions answered. Yep, um, but you will have an opportunity to make a statement in a, little, in a little bit here. Thank you. All right. So I have another phone. Well, let me go back to the question and answer box and to see if I have any others. I don't see anything new. Okay. Yeah, it looks like we've hit all those. I've got one more raised hand. Uh, phone and caller 6265. You can, uh, you're unmuted and you can ask your question. Oh, I already asked my question. Oh, okay, must must hand must have been raised from before. We'll uh, lower that for you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Are there any other questions uh, for our panel before we move to the next? There we go. Lowered hand. Uh, before we move to the next part, and so what we'll do is we'll go through the other ways you can submit a comment. For the record uh, on this application and project uh, in case you didn't want to make a statement tonight and then we'll go through the hearing part which is the part where you can make a statement for the record um so this part right now is specifically for any questions and i'm not seeing any others at this point so we're going to go ahead and move on to the hearing portion for tonight right I'd like to thank uh, everyone for asking those questions and for our panel uh, for being on the line here for that Q&A session. All right. Uh, and like I mentioned, oh, uh, actually, I have a, one more raised hand. So we're going to we're going to go to uh, Gene Martin. We're going to let you ask your question before we move on. You caught us just in time. All right. Are you there, Gene? You can unmute yourself and ask your question. I was wondering how you were going to run the cables under water. Do you dig it? And what are the chances that you will cause flooding onto other properties? Does that make sense? I think that would be a good question for Harrison to address their construction practices. Yep. Um, we're planning to do HDD trenching or overhead cables. Um, and the types of uh, activities we're doing will use best management practices that are typical to the industry um, to ensure a low, low, low probability of anything like flooding or anything like that. Hmm. Okay. Right. Yeah, thanks for your question and thanks for that answer. Oh, my. Probability is statisticians, liars. I'm sorry, I didn't catch that. All right. 
Thank you. All right. All right, yeah, thanks again uh, to our panel. And, and like I mentioned, I'm gonna go through these other ways that you can make a comment on this application um, and project. Uh, you can do it through Eagle's My Enviro system. Uh, and that's through submission number HPS02CT99G5E. And that link uh, is that you see in front of you is gonna be put in the chat. Uh, but you can also submit uh, by mail to Eagle Water Resources Division, Kalamazoo District Office, 7953 Adobe Road, that's A-D-O-B-E Road, in Kalamazoo, Michigan, 49009. I'm just uh, spelling that out for people on the phone. And then the comment period after the public hearing will be open for 10 days, uh, which will be, and it's actually in my, my subtitle or my uh transcripts like march 8th it looks like so march march 8th, 8th. yep yep <laughs> my captions are, are going over the the word so i'm having trouble reading it all right and so what we'll do now is we're going to start this hearing portion i'll let michelle read the opening statement for us and we'll get rolling all right so um thanks everyone for joining us um and bear with me as I read a fairly lengthy uh, hearing summary and then statement. So I'll start by introducing myself again. I'm Michelle DeLong, a district representative in the Water Resource Division, uh, the Michigan Department of Environment, Great Lakes and Energy. Um, that will be serving as the hearing officer for this public hearing on the Eagle submission number HPS02CT99G5E. Uh, notice for this hearing was published in the Marshall Advisor and Chronicle on the February 17th edition, as well as the online Eagle calendar. Um, as we said before, with me tonight is Kyle Alexander, who is the Field Operations Section Manager for Eagles Water Resources Division. And so I will go through and summarize the agenda um, for the remainder of the hearing. Um, just for some background information about why we're here tonight and then describe the purpose of the hearing and how your comments will be used. Following that, I'll outline the procedures under which we will take your comments and then describe what will happen after tonight's hearing. It will then be time for you to provide your comments and once that, once that is complete, I'll read the closing statement for the hearing. So for additional background information, um, the Water Resource Division is responsible for administering several programs that help protect inland lakes and streams, wetlands, floodplains, sand dunes, and the Great Lakes. These programs regulate activities like dredging or filling in lake, stream, or wetland, constructing a dam, constructing a marina, placing shore protection, or constructing permanent docks, and building in designated critical sand dune areas, wetland, or floodplain. The law that governs these responsibilities is the Natural Resources and Environmental Protection Act 1994, Public Act 451 as amended, and you'll hear us refer to that as Act 451. We're here tonight because Harrison Luna, representing Hecate Energy, has proposed to permanently convert forested wetland, install electrical transmission lines under and over wetland and streams, and install a new culvert for an access road crossing of an unnamed stream to facilitate construction of the Sunfish Solar Tube project. So reading directly from the public notice, I'll give some additional details. Um, approximately 0 0.66 acres of forested wetland is proposed to be permanently converted to emergent wetland as a result of tree clearing activities for installation of new overhead electrical transmission lines and due to temporary access for installation of underground electrical lines by plowing methods. Eight inch diameter underground electrical power collection cables are proposed to be installed at a minimum of four feet deep beneath eight stream locations using directional drilling construction methods, while the plowing or knifing in construction method is proposed for cable installation through five wetland locations, which is proposed to temporarily impact approximately 0 0.81 acres of wetland. Tree clearing and approximately 207 cubic yards of excavation and backfill is proposed for the placement of 23 new utility poles 
within approximately 2,357 linear feet of wetland for construction of new overhead electrical lines. Approximately 13 cubic yards of excavation and backfill is also proposed for installation of a new three-sided culvert measuring approximately 28 feet long by 20 feet wide for road crossing of an unnamed stream. Temporary wetland impact is also proposed for the placement of timber matting within wetland areas to allow vehicular access to work areas and wetland mitigation is proposed off-site. So, to discuss the purpose for the hearing, um, for a permit to be granted, EGLE must find that the proposed activities described in the public notice meet criterion set by part 301, Inland Lakes and Streams, and part 303, Wetland Protection of Act 451. In general, we must consider the effect of the proposed project on regulated resources. When reviewing an application for permit under the provisions of part 301, EGLE must consider the following as required by section 30106 of part 301. First, the department shall issue a permit if it finds that the structure or project will not adversely affect the public trust or riparian rights. And the department shall not grant a permit if the per proposed project or structure will unlawfully impair or destroy any of the waters or other natural resources of the state. When reviewing an application for permit under the provisions of part 303, EGLE must consider the following as required by section 30311 of part 303. A permit for an activity shall not be approved unless the department determines that the issuance of a permit is in the public interest, that the permit is necessary to realize the benefits derived from the activity and that the activity is otherwise lawful. The permit shall not be issued unless it's shown that an unacceptable disruption will not result to the aquatic resources. And a permit shall not be issued unless the applicant has demonstrated that either the proposed activity is primarily dependent upon being located in wetland or a feasible and prudent alternative does not exist. The purpose of tonight's hearing is to give anyone interested in the Sunfish 2 solar project an opportunity to provide information for EGLE to consider before a decision is made on the application. Please recognize that EGLE can only consider information if it relates to the pre previously mentioned criteria in Act 451. Some of you may simply want to express your support or opposition to the project, and we'll be happy to make a note of your position, but please understand that EGLE is by law not allowed to base our decision on whether there is widespread support or opposition to a project. So tonight the hearing is being recorded and your comments will be a part of the information EGLE will consider in making its decision to issue or deny a permit on the proposed project. The public comment period for this public hearing is open for 10 days from the date of the hearing, ending on March 8, 2024. Additional information and comments submitted in writing during the 10 day public comment period will also be considered in EGLE's decision. Uh, following the close of the public comment period, EGLE will make a decision to either issue a permit for the project as, as proposed or with modifications or send a letter of denial. You may find out what the decision is by checking the EGLE My Enviro portal website and searching for the application number, which again is HPS 02CT99G5E. Finally, to ensure that the hearing is conducted in a fair manner, we'll follow these steps for taking comments. Uh, first, we'll begin by calling on anyone who has indicated with their hearing registration that they'd like to speak. Um, if you did not indicate when you registered that you wanted to speak, but you still have a comment to provide, please raise your hand in the Zoom toolbar. We will then call on all those that raise their hand to make a comment if they haven't already been called upon. And as a reminder, if you're calling in by phone, follow directions of the moderator on how to raise your hand. You may also submit written comments to EGLE via the My Enviro portal, email, or US mail. Uh, when your name is called, your microphone will be unmuted. And as you begin your comments, please state your name and any group or association you may represent. Each person will be given four minutes to make their comments. We will indicate to you when you have a minute left, please begin wrapping up your comments and end within the allotted time. Uh, if need be, we'll indicate when your time has ended. I ask that we all be courteous and respectful to one another tonight. Please also recognize that Eagle staff are here to provide a fair opportunity for you to express your comments on the proposed project and to listen to those comments. Uh, thank you for your attention. 
Uh, we can now begin calling the names of those who have indicated that they would like to make a statement. All right, thank you for reading that, Michelle. Uh, just a couple quick things before we get started. Um, just to reiterate, it's going to be, um, yeah, everybody will have uh, four minutes. and It'll be one comment per person uh, to make this fair. Um, if you're on the phone and there's somebody else or you're, you're making your comment and there's somebody else with you that would like to make a comment, just let me know. And I will uh, move on to them so they can make their comment. And so, yeah, please list your name and any affiliation you might have if you choose. Uh, we're going to start with the people who during registration indicated they wanted to make a comment. And so we are going to start with Terry W. is the only person on my list who indicated they want to make a comment. So after Terry, we will go to anybody else in the audience who um, wanted to raise their hand and make a comment. Uh, and again, if you're on the phone, you can select pound two to raise your hand. And I go through that too. So Terry, we're going to unmute you. Um, I should also mention that I have a timer here. You're going to see the, the timer count down and you're going to hear a bell when you have one minute left. It's going to sound like this. So you'll hear that when you have a minute left. And uh, you can begin when you're ready, Terry. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. All right. Thank you very much. Okay. So Number one, the issue that you're not understanding here is not your jurisdiction and not the statutes that govern you. The problem is that this matter was brought to you fraudulently. I've already provided documentation that uh, if there's a way to submit this, I will submit it in writing again, but to multiple officials at EGLE that they now have affidavits in front of them showing that in violation of MCL 15.342, uh, members of Lee Township boards to profit themselves and publicly and notoriously pointed this out to members at the board meeting that they were profiting from this. That's a violation of law. Under Michigan common law, that makes it a felony because it's misconduct in office, MCL 750.505. I provided you the Supreme Court decision, United States versus Throckmorton, 98 USC 61, that says one of the most basic fundamental issues at law is fraud vitiates all. We're seeing that now with uh, uh, Ms. Willis, the prosecutor in the Fulton County case, because even if everything that she's saying about the former President Trump is absolutely true, the fact that it was brought fraudulently completely destroys that action. So what I'm pointing out to you is that this matter was brought to you fraudulently and you have an affidavit, at least one, in your possession. And when I say your, I mean corporately, several individuals, if you'd like me to name them, I'd be glad to have that affidavit. It was also sent in hard copy to your offices. The bottom line is anything that comes from this can only damage interested parties. The gentleman that's trying to install this, if it's demonstrated to be fraud, uh, he will be damaged financially because he's proceeding in reliance as though this is an appropriate action. And it's not, it's fraudulent. So anybody else that's against it, as am I, they will be damaged if this is allowed to proceed because eventually this is going to become understood to be fraud and will be uh, undone. The problem with that is that people are going to rely on any decision that you make. I strongly urge members of EGLE to refer this either to the FBI Public Correction uh, Investigating Service or to the Attorney General because these actions rise to the level of felony crimes. This is not a matter that we're going to let go. We are very concerned with pursuing this lawfully by every legal and lawful means that there is, nothing other than that. But I'm, I'm informing you now of this because this is critical to this whole matter. The, the issue was brought to you fraudulently. Several members of Michigan, or correction, uh, Lee Township boards have admitted that, and we have an affidavit in evidence that, to my knowledge, has not been up offset by another affidavit. All the evidence is there for you to look at. Thank you very much for your time. 
please do not proceed to a judgment. Anything you come up with is premature, given the fraud that initiated this. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for your comment, Terry. All right. So, oops, one second here. So anybody else who would like to make a comment, uh, feel free to raise your hand in Zoom. Uh, if you're on the phone, you can select pound two uh, and we will call on you in turn. All right, so next up, Jacqueline Hurst. Uh, we will uh, unmute you and then you can unmute yourself and begin when you're ready. Are you there, Jacqueline? Um, can you hear me? Yep, we can hear you. You can begin when you're ready. Okay, great. Um, just wanted more information on the site plan. So the site plan that was presented tonight um, seemed very um, difficult to read. Would love to see something like that in maybe a GIS format so we could overlay like layers of the wetlands and understand um, the complete effect to the wetlands. I feel like the statement was broken down into you know, 0.8 or 0.2, it, it got a little confusing to how much over uh, overall is impacted by this project. Um, also, the setbacks weren't necessarily clear. Um, and when you start talking about hauling in dirt and, and fill, um, that, that could create flooding. So I feel like the flooding is a great point to understand, as well as the water withdrawal. Um, there are some places here in Michigan that are struggling with water and um, water withdrawal to clean solar panels and wash them should be a consideration, especially when it impacts private wells that may be nearby. Um, one more thing, I would love solid sources, um, source documentation to the toxicity of the PV solar panels. Um, would just love that current data instead of old data. So you can say, yes, it's changed. Yes, there's no chemicals, but really looking for the hard data on those panels. Also would love to know where they're manufactured just to make sure we're, we're um, helping Michigan. So thank you. Yeah, thanks for your comment, Jacqueline. All right. All right, next uh, we have a phone-in caller, 6265, last four digits. We are going to unmute you, and then you can unmute, unmute yourself and begin your comment when you're ready. Hi, this is Rosanna Mass, and um, I was just wondering, when you do this, do you take in effect what um, effect it has on wildlife in that? Because we have a large wildlife population out here besides the people, and, you know, like the other day, I had a black cougar in my backyard. I haven't seen it in about 10 years, but now that we're doing all the tree cutting, it's here. You know, so I'm wondering, do you look at that and look how it affects the turtles and stuff, or are we just going to plow through? Because that's the way it was presented to us. And I want to make sure I get Michelle's number so I can um, have the information to finish up giving you stuff. Yeah, so I'll provide you with Michelle's contact info. That's on a slide here and a couple slides. Um, so okay. right, so right now we're just taking comments on the project, but we'll provide you yeah. with the information for additional questions. Because not knowing exactly where the site is, like the other person said, I don't know exactly how what to comment on this project because it's been very unclear to us. And I went in and looked at the map, and they're very poorly done, and you cannot actually tell what they're doing <laughs> where it's at okay gotcha and then we'll, we'll also be providing those other ways to to provide a comment so you'll have 10 days after tonight okay, to make a comment so you could you know talk to michelle um and then also provide supplemental comments if you'd like okay thank you very much all right all right, next up oops, is Amy uh, Hoopenbecker. Amy, we're going to allow you to talk uh, and make your comment when you're ready. Are you there, Amy? It looks like you are unmuted on our end. You'll just need to select your microphone icon to unmute yourself and begin your comment. 
All right. So what we'll do is we'll move on to the next person, Amy, and then we'll come back to you to see if you're able to get your microphone situation worked out. All right. So next up is a phone and caller with the last four digits, 3146. All right, so we'll allow you to talk uh, and begin your comment. You can unmute yourself. Are you there, okay. phone call? Can you hear me now? Can, yep. can you hear yep. me now? Yep. Okay. I was, I was having trouble getting in earlier, but uh, Larry Holcomb calling in. Uh, I'm a certified wildlife biologist, and just overall comments, uh, because I'm concerned about uh, projects like this, uh, solar panels, and and then the, the accessory lands that you're dealing with for uh, water water permit uh, and and modification. Uh, I, as a, a, an earlier caller, was concerned about wildlife because I'm a certified wildlife biologist. I'm always looking at the total impact of, of any sites like this, which is not agricultural. I know a lot of the land is, is certified as co co agricultural but it's truly heavy industry out in an agricultural area and I, I anything that was there any terms of wildlife large and small reptiles amphibians uh, mammals birds that live there will not be there and so for every Every square mile that you're going to have 25 fewer deer, or they, they're going to go elsewhere. They can't breed their turkeys the same way. Uh, and all the smaller critters, you know, all of the songbirds, and if you're going to remove trees, especially you're going to remove songbirds, birds of prey, um, and uh, woodpeckers. So anything that's there now will be, nearly everything will be gone from that site. Uh, I hate to see trees taken down unnecessarily. And I know most sol solar sites require that because they don't want the shade. But I, I think it's a mistake. And I think in this particular case, I would be opposed to, I, I live about four, four or five miles from the site. Uh, to the to the west and but i just wanted to give my comments overall i know that the staff there in uh dnr and in negley try to do the best they can but i think it's a mistake to have a site there at all thank you for the opportunity yeah thank you for your comment all right so next up, uh, we have Amy Hoopenbecker. So Amy, we're gonna try to uh, unmute you again. Are you there? Are you there, Amy? Can you hear me now? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay. Uh, a lot of the questions were the same that I had that have already been asked. Um, one's a more specific area of uh, where the 0.66 acres are and the 0.81 acres. Um, those are the only two acreages that I that I heard, um, and kind of wanted to know where they where they're located. Uh, like I said, the maps aren't very clear. Um, another question that I had was, you know, what's the effects on the wildlife? Has there been studies done on that? Um, I know I uh, one of the things is uh, there are eagles in the area. Um, I know it said in their study that there probable absence of eagles. That's not true. Um, several people can testify to that, that there are eagles. I don't know if the wetland disturbing that is going to affect the eagles at all. Uh, just a concern that I have. Um, uh, flooding's another, you know, again, all questions that people have already asked. So uh, kind of just the same questions is all. All right, well, thanks for your comment. Hey. All right, and then I still I have one hand. This might still be uh, call in number caller uh, thirty one forty six. Did you just give your statement? I still have your hand raised. I think that's the one we just did. I'll look yes, up. that was me. Yeah. Okay. Thank perfect. You. Thanks. We will lower your hand uh, and move on. Thank you. 
All right. Is there anybody else uh, on the phone, either on the phone or in Zoom, uh, who is logged in, who would like to make a comment on uh, tonight's application and project? Uh, if you're on the phone, you can select pound two again, and you can, uh, that'll raise your hand and we'll call on you using the last four digits of your phone number, as we talked about before. Uh, if you're in Zoom, you can just select the raise hand icon, and what we'll do is call on you using your name. And if there aren't any additional comments for tonight, uh, what we'll do is we'll go through those other ways to make a comment in case you have something to add uh, or wanted to provide follow-up comments. Uh, and then we'll also provide Michelle's contact information, like I mentioned before, so that you can uh, contact her in case you have additional questions. All right, so I'm still not seeing any other raised hands. And so we're going to go ahead and wrap up this part of the hearing. Michelle, would you want to read the closing statement for us tonight? Sure. Um, thanks, everyone, for your comments and uh, cooperation. We appreciate your interest in the project and that you took the time to be here tonight. Um, so as we indicated at the beginning of the hearing, you may submit additional written comments until March 8th of 2024. Following the close of the public comment period, we will consider all comments received and make a decision on the proposed project. Uh, just to remind those who may still want to submit a written comment, comments can be submitted via the MyEnviro portal, email, or U.S. mail. Um, and you'll see that um, specific information here in a minute. Um, so the hearing is now closed. Thank you again, everyone. All right, thanks, Michelle. Yeah, I've got the screen up with uh, the other ways to make a comment. For those of you on the phone, uh, that's submission number HPS02CT99G5E. I'll read that again, HPS02CT, Charlie Tango, 99 G is in golf, five E is in echo. Um, and you can, can submit those comments by mail to Eagle Water Resources Division, Kalamazoo District Office, and the address is 7953 Adobe Road, and that's spelled A-D-O-B-E, Adobe Road, Kalamazoo, Michigan, 49009, uh, or again, via my Enviro. As Michelle mentioned, uh, comments will be open until March 8th. And as promised, I've got Michelle's contact information on your screen. Um, you can contact Michelle DeLong, Environmental Quality Analyst, and her phone number is 269-491-9403. And again, that's 269-491-9403. You can also contact Michelle by email at DeLongM, and that's spelled D E L O N. GM1 at michigan.gov. And again, that's D E L O N G M, the number one at M I C H I G A N.gov. All right. So we're about to wrap up. Any uh, final comments for us tonight, Kyle? Uh, just to thank you to everyone for logging on this evening and especially to those who um, you know, provided a thoughtful comment. I appreciate it. Yeah, thank you, Kyle. Thanks for everyone uh, yeah, participating tonight. Uh, just a reminder for me that this was recorded and it'll be uh, on our YouTube channel here in a couple of days. So you can keep an eye out for it uh, and we'll see it again then. With that, thank you all. Hope you all have a great rest of your night. Thank you.